So, you can play a regular chess game. Now you want to play some fast chess. Great, but what does it mean? Hmm. Well, different people have different definitions for what makes a fast chess game. On Chess Kid, anything 15 minutes or less, we consider pretty fast. However, there's some people in the world that play 30 second games. That's called Hyper Bullet, and this old man is not going to be playing that time control. But I do play a lot of three minute and five minute games. Those are pretty fast. One of the best ways to prepare for a fast chess game is by doing lots of puzzles. That's because in chess, you need to know a lot of really quick two and three move patterns and calculations because those are what's going to come up the most often in fast chess. You're not going to do a lot of deep calculation, but you need to analyze quickly and correctly for those short little bursts. I've got some favorite fast chess games, and I'm actually going to show one in a future video, so stay tuned for that. You probably should not start playing fast chess games right when you're learning how to play because, first of all, you'll get some bad habits. Real chess is still slow, methodical, deep thinking. Also, you don't have those pattern mm. recognition skills right at the beginning. Those take time to implement and develop, so I would hold off for a few months. There's going to be plenty of time in your life to speed up, but if you start playing really fast at the beginning, it's much harder to learn how to slow down. Now, when it comes to choosing openings, uh, some people prefer gambits because when you sacrifice material to get quick development, it can be very hard for your opponent to defend when they have very little time. I think defending is kind of a finer art than attacking sometimes. However, my most important advice is just know your openings really well because if you can play those first 10 moves in only a couple of seconds off your clock, that's going to save you a lot of time. You're going to bank that time for more complicated parts of the game. I'm actually going to show you a game that I played in a three minute chess game and it's going to use a lot of these concepts. Okay, here we go. I was white and I played e4 and against the Sicilian, I always play c3. And in fact, this position that we're getting into, I've had oh, about a million times. So I spent all of about three seconds up to this point. Now my opponent could have captured there, but he decided not to. He actually let me capture him. And now I'm already giving black a decision. This is kind of a nice idea in fast chess. Give your opponent two interesting moves and it takes them time to figure out which one they want to play. Even if both are reasonable, uh, the more decisions you have, the more time that ticks off your clock. Now my opponent took oh. with the queen. And in this position, I couldn't decide if I was going to develop my knight, which almost always goes to a3 in these variations, because you can see when it goes to b5, it's got some prospects on c7. Or my other thought was to attack the queen. This is a classic decision that you don't want to spend a lot of time on because both moves are so good and you're probably going to end up playing both anyway. So in a position like this, when you see a reasonable looking move, I would just go ahead and play it. There's really no chance of a tactic here. So knight a3, bishop e3, doesn't matter too much. I made this move in only about one or two seconds of thought. Okay, my opponent's queen hit out and I decided to castle. I'm still banking a lot of time for more complicated positions. Now after rook to d8, I had another one of those choices that we sometimes don't like. The queen could really go to any of these three squares. They all offer something different. Queen c2 is the safest place for the queen. Queen b3 obviously puts pressure on the b pawn and queen a4 pins the knight. They all do a little something and I didn't spend too much time. You don't want to invest, you know, let's say half your time on a decision like this. So I just played the move queen b3. Now my opponent defended the pawn by playing b6. And in this position, I noticed that the weakening of this knight means my light squared bishop goes way up in value. Now, of course, I did some very quick calculation. This is the kind of thing you want to be able to do in fast chess. I thought, bishop b5, that's got to be the right move, right? It pins the unprotected knight. But then I thought, no, actually, the bishop just goes back to d7, defending, and then it occurred to me, ah, if I get rid of the light squared bishop, then this move has a lot more teeth, or frankly, any attack on the light squares. So I played the move h3. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, isn't there a chance that after h3, my opponent could sacrifice? Well, I've actually got a video about this exact idea on Chess Kid, and the only calculation I did here was if my opponent takes, and I take, and the queen takes, and I'm worried about this knight coming here and giving checkmate, 
Well, in this position, just like I explained in my video, whenever somebody does this sacrifice on the hook pawn, you can play the move knight h2 and you're perfectly safe. You keep the knight out of g4 and you can always expel the queen with a move like bishop g4 later on once you have a little bit more guarding of the square. So that very quick analysis, realizing that I'm not afraid of the sacrifice on h3, allowed me to play this move quickly. Now my opponent either had to take and give away the bishop pair or run away. Now this is a position where I use a little bit of my banked time. Why? Because I've done about a million puzzles with discovered attack and I thought, hmm, maybe I should spend a little bit of extra time in this position figuring out if there is a discovered attack on the queen. I couldn't find a killer move, but I did find the move knight to g5. And if this queen runs away somewhere uncareful, there could be a checkmate on f7. Now the queen moved here and I did this thing called toggling. This is not a thing you have to do, but if you can play a couple of moves back and forth and give your opponent the thought that uh, maybe they have to defend a little bit longer, then that can gain you some time. So I played bishop d3 because if my opponent makes a mistake like bishop f5, now the queen's overworked. I'll trade bishops and then I will take on f7. It's not mate, but it's still very good. So my opponent had to figure that out put the queen back here, and I repeated the position. Now, I'm not going for a draw. I'm just making my opponent burn some time off the clock. A little bit of an advanced idea, but hey, it works for me. Okay, mm. here I could not figure out a winning move, and you don't want to try to always play the most precise move. Here, when I couldn't figure out a winning tactic on f7, I didn't want to figure out for a long time, well, is it better to put the rook in the game or better bring the knight here or the knight here? You just need to play a reasonable developing move. A knight a3 with the idea of getting to the square c7 was my big idea. And after e6, well, I just headed for c7, right? Just continue your plans. My opponent played the move knight to d5, and here I played a nice move. This knight is stopping my knight from coming to c7, so I simply kicked the knight. And after knight takes, I did play my most imprecise move of the game. I should have actually given check, and when the king moved, then taken the knight. Unfortunately, I took the knight first, and that, that allowed my opponent to bring the bishop out, and now when I gave check, the king could hide on a little bit better square, which was the square f8. But you know what? I've still got better development, I've got a safer king, and when it comes to a fast chess game, that usually leads to something good. The game actually continued with me saving my queen, my opponent played a really bad move, pawn h6, and I invested about 20 seconds, a pretty significant amount of my time here, because I felt like if I don't find a tactic now, then the queens are just gonna trade when I move my knight, and my opponent is gonna be able to survive until the end game. So sometimes recognizing key moments, which comes with experience, is an important part of fast chess, because you'll use some of that precious time you've got. And I found the tactic, you've probably already found it yourself. This pawn is a bit overworked, trying to guard too many things, and the move knight on G takes E6 got me an advantage, because after takes, I took the queen first, and after takes, knight takes, and in this position, I'm already up a pawn with a safer king, and this is my my final piece of advice in fast chess, when you get a winning advantage, just play really boring. So I took the rook and then I immediately tried to trade rooks and in fact I'm going to play a couple more moves. In this position, I didn't even care if my opponent doubled my pawns because it's so much of a simpler position to play without this knight on the board. If that knight stays on the board, I have to worry about all kinds of forks and tricks and everything. So here I actually just played the move rook to e1 and I went on to win despite the fact I only had about 30 seconds left at this point because I made a few more trades. I got my rook to the square e4 to expel that knight and it was actually not so hard. So do a lot of puzzles, get your openings prepped, but do not try fast chess right away. I think it's something you should save. If you're wondering what is my favorite fast chess game of all time, well stay tuned because it's coming up in a future Chess Kid YouTube video and you're not going to want to miss it.